June 27th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 from the New Testament. With regard to food sacrificed to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If someone thinks he knows something, he does not yet know to the degree that he needs to know. But if someone loves God, he is known by God. With regard then to eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol in this world is nothing, and that there is no God but one. If after all there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we live, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we live. But this knowledge is not shared by all, and some, by being accustomed to idols in former times, eat this food as an idol sacrifice, and their conscience, because it is weak, is defiled. Now food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse if we do not eat, and no better if we do. But be careful that this liberty of yours does not become a hindrance to the weak. For if someone weak sees you who possess knowledge dining in an idol's temple, will not his conscience be strengthened to eat food offered to idols? So by your knowledge, the weak brother or sister for whom Christ died is destroyed. If you sin against your brothers or sisters in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. For this reason, if food causes my brother or sister to sin, I will never eat meat again so that I may not cause one of them to sin. God, we live in a time where the food part, for the most part, doesn't pertain to us. But there's many things that, as Christians, we need to be aware of so that we don't cause other people to sin. Um, Case in point, uh, I am a single person, and I have married friends. And I have to be really careful of protecting myself when I'm around my married friends. Because if they all start talking about being married and talking about certain um, conversations, that is my, that is my sin area. Uh, lust, sexual immorality, that is an area that I can get into trouble really quick as a single person. And so I have to be really careful about being around those conversations. Well, that's exactly what Paul was talking about, that those people who are married should be aware that I am weak in that area. I'm working on it, but I am weak in that area. Um, and if they're talking about it, then it could potentially lead me to sin. And so they've got to be aware of that person in their midst who is weaker or who doesn't have that opportunity to do something. They need to recognize that something that is not a sin to them is definitely a sin to somebody else. Same is true if I go out to dinner and if I have friends who have problems with alcohol, they can't just have one or two glasses of wine. They have to have a whole bottle to the point of getting drunk, which is a sin. Um, Then at dinner, I just won't have wine. There's no reason to tempt them by even having that on the table. Uh, So it's all of our responsibility to be really careful about if something in our life isn't a sin, we're good to go with it. It may potentially be a sin in somebody else's life uh, that they are weak in that area and they can't control that particular part of their life. Uh, We need to be hyper aware of that so we don't lead others into sin. I know a greater part of my life I led people to sin and it wasn't unintentional, it was very (laughs) intentional. Um, Because I didn't care about the sin. I didn't care about what you thought God Um, at the time. I didn't care about the people I obviously didn't love them Um, and and I didn't love myself and so there was Sin after consequence after sin after consequence Repeated over and over again and I was causing other people to sin uh, as well. Now granted everybody has the choice of responsibility and I get that But we, as your children, are called to a higher standard, and we need to be aware of the people who are around us, um, and also speak up if we're the weak one in a situation. Speak up to those around us, or for us to intentionally leave the situation uh, so that we don't sin. God, thank you for your amazing, powerful word. 
for the boundaries you put in our life to help us live a life that would please you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.